All right, just going to go through and refute some more of Steven Anderson's foolish post-tribber arguments. This time he uses the typical post-tribber argument of, well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 lines up with Matthew chapter 24, and just nothing new I've ever heard, because I used to be a post-tribber. And it's funny, because a lot of post-tribbers will say, I used to be a pre I used to be a pre-tribber, but I searched the scriptures, and then I became post-trib. Well, guess what? I used to be a post-tribber, and when I searched the scriptures, I could clearly see it was pre-trib. Okay, but not going to get too much into that here, but let's go into refuting this and show how Matthew 24 does not line up with 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's get right into this. First Thessalonians chapter 4 gives us the most detailed, clear description of the rapture in the Bible. And I want to point out just a couple of characteristics of the rapture from this passage. Beginning in verse 15, the Bible reads, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so the three key points that I want to point out there are that a trumpet sounds, Jesus Christ comes in the clouds and all of the saved are caught up together to be with him in the clouds. Whether they're the dead in Christ or those that alive and remain, it is Christ in the clouds, a trumpet sounds, and the believers are caught up to be with him. Now you got a little bit of a problem there because there's no resurrection of the dead saints in Matthew 24. But there is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Got a bit of a problem there. And before somebody says, well, um, it was a mystery that Paul revealed, but it was just revealed to him later. He was giving more details to what Jesus Christ was saying in Matthew 24. Okay, let's see about that. Because you got a problem there too. Because Jesus Christ himself also revealed the resurrection of the dead apart from the events described in Matthew 24. G uh, John chapter 5, down to verse... John chapter 5, verse... 25 to 29. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to the Son to hath life have life in himself, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. Uh, and in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth they that have done good unto re to the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation so he's revealing the resurrection of the dead there I believe this is referring to both the resurrection of the dead saints and also the resurrection of the people in hell to the great white throne judgment that's what I believe it's referring to but more proof that Jesus Christ revealed the resurrection of the dead John chapter 11 verses 25 26. Actually, begin at verse 24 just to get a bit of context there. Uh, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection in the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. So Jesus Christ reveals the resurrection of the dead, apart from the events described in Matthew 24, which are different events. So, uh, Jesus Christ revealed it. So, to anyone who said, well, uh, Paul just revealed it later on. No. Okay? The rapture was a mystery revealed to Paul. But the resurrection of the dead was revealed by Jesus Christ, although it is part of the rapture, not the second coming events in Matthew chapter 24. So I point that out. Let's continue. Listen to Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31, and see the exact same elements. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, that's a key phrase, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Well, then you got another problem there, too, because if this is for Christians, because he denies that Matthew 24 is talking to the Jews, if this is for Christians and the same events described by Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, notice how it mentions the sign of the Son of Man, okay? 
That's a key wording there, sign of the Son of Man. And on, on the thing of after the tribulation, he said, oh, it's a key phrase, after the tribulation of those days. Not after the tribulation, the tribulation as a title. So he kind of leaves that out, obviously. But uh, notice how it says, verse 30, it says, the sign of the Son of Man. It's a key point there, because who requires a sign? The New Testament church. No, it's actually not the New Testament church that needs a sign. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Who needs a sign? It's the Jews. If you want further proof on that, Exodus chapter 4 and verse number 28. And Moses told Aaron all the words of the Lord who had sent him, and all the signs which he had commanded him. Verse 29. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered all, together all the elders of, chil of the children of Israel, and Aaron spake all the words that the Lord, which the Lord had spoken unto Moses, and did the signs in the sight of the people. Signs are for Jews. More proof on that. Let's give you some further proof on that. Exodus chapter 7, verses 3 to 5. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt, and bring forth mine armies, and my people and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgments. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt, and bring out my I bring out the children of Israel from among them. Okay, further proof, if you want, still want more proof, if you're still not convinced that these signs are for the Jewish people, proving that Matthew 24 is indeed for Jews. Acts chapter 2, verses 16 to... Actually, I'll start at verse... Let me start at verse 24. Uh, I'll start at verse 14 just to get a bit of context here. Acts chapter 2, verse 14 to 24. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah, talking to the Jews there, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, again, the holy city of Jerusalem is for the Jews, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Uh, for these are not drunken, as ye suppose, there, as you suppose, seeing that it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. And he's going to reference what Joel talked about in Joel chapter 2, verse 28 to 32. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out, my, pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Sorry to, all the sorry to all the charismatics out there. Dreams are for the Jewish people. They're not for New Testament Gentile Christians. Uh, and, and, and all my servants and all my handmaidens, I will pour out, those, pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show the wonders in heaven above, and signs in, signs, notice that, in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Before that great and noble day the Lord comes, sorry. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved uh, of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did in him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Whom God hath raised up, having loosed from the pains, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Who are the signs for? The Jews. If you still want more proof, if you're still not convinced of that, turn to Joel chapter two, verse twenty-eight to thirty-one. That's the prophecy Peter was referring to here. Joel chapter two, verse twenty-eight down to. Actually, heard Joel chapter two, verse twenty-eight to thirty-two. My my apologies. And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show thee wonders in heaven and in the earth, blood and, fil and fire and pillars of smoke. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion, Israel, and in Jerusalem, again Israel, shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The signs are for the Jewish people. One more scripture to prove that. 
This is a good one to use against some of these charismatic, phone, these, these demonic charismatics out there who try to fake the uh, spiritual gifts. Uh, here it is, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21 and 22. In the law it is written, With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people, and yet for all that will they, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. Verse 22, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that, that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying saveth not them that believe, uh, not for, not but, sorry, believe not, but for them which believe. Bit of a hard time reading there. Uh, it's not. It's just not good reading on a computer. I just. I've, I've learned that over the time, over time doing these videos. But who are the signs for? Not for them that believe, but for them that believe not. The Jews. So when you have signs mentioned in Matthew 24, it's further confirming that this is for the Jewish people because they require a sign. So Anderson deceived his people there, but not surprising. So continuing. So again, we have the exact same elements in Matthew 24. We have Christ coming in the clouds, we have the trumpet sounding, and we have all the elect being gathered. That's exactly what we saw in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and that is because the rapture occurs after the tribulation. Okay, now you have a few more problems there. Who are the elect described in Matthew chapter 24? And we're going to get into some of the so-called comparisons between the two passages. But first of all, who are the elect in Matthew 24? Again. We showed earlier that it's talking about signs, and we show that it's for the Jewish people. But who are the elect in Matthew 24? Well, first of all, let's establish further who Matthew 24 is written to. Matthew chapter 24, uh, verse number, where is it? Verse number 16. Then let, them, then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, if you're a Christian, what are you doing in Judea? It's the Jews that are in Judea. Verse 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. If you're a Christian, what are you uh, doing the Sabbath for? What are you worried about the Sabbath for? Uh, if you're a Christian, Romans 13, 9, you list the Ten Commandments for a New Testament Christian. The Sabbath is not mentioned there. Okay, so further proof that this is for the Jewish people. But who are the elect mentioned in Matthew chapter 24? Because Anderson thinks that every single time elect is mentioned, it's referring to saved Christians. Well, first of all, you got a problem there because there's no Christians anywhere in the four Gospels. Okay. The New Testament did not begin until after the death of Jesus Christ, not in Matthew chapter 21. Uh, Hebrews chapter, let me just go to that scripture just to establish my point here. Hebrews chapter 9 verses 15 to 19. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, the Old Testament in other words, that they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where, look at this, for where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a fourth force after men are dead, otherwise it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Again, who's the mediator of the New Testament? Jesus Christ. Verse 18, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. Verse 19, for Moses had spoken every precept and, and to all the people, according to the law, he took up the blood of the calves and of the goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Okay? Uh, and that's verse 20, by the way. So, when did the New Testament begin? After the death of Jesus Christ, not in Matthew chapter 21. But we're going to just let's just see who the, who the elect are. Okay? Because the elect can refer to saved Christians. There are examples of that. Galatians, or, uh, Colossians chapter 3, I believe it is, verse 11 to 12, is a reference to elect referring to Christians. But not every reference to elect is always referring to Christians. Proof on that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation, which is in uh, Christ Jesus, with eternal glory. Um, if, you're, if you're a Christian, why do you need to obtain salvation? If you're saved, you are a Christian. There's no such thing as a Christian who needs to obtain salvation. If you're not a Christian, you're not saved. You don't have salvation. So if this is referring to saved Christians, why do they have to obtain salvation? Because it's not. It's referring to unsaved Jews. That's who the elect are in Matthew chapter 24. It's not referring to Christians. There are no Christians in the time of Jesus Christ. Christians did not exist until after the, the uh, death of Jesus Christ under the New Testament. There's nobody in Christ except for the apostles. Read about that in John chapter 17, verses 21 and 23. Uh, but there's nobody in Christ outside of the apostles. 
in the four gospel accounts. The four gospel accounts are doctrinally under the Old Testament, because again, the blood of Jesus Christ had not been shed yet, so the New Testament had not come in. They were doctrinally under the Old Testament still. But I'm going to go over a couple of, of major inconsistencies with Matthew chapter 24 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm just going to get my notes out. So here are our list of inconsistencies that prove these passages don't line up and they're not talking about the same event. First of all, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18, God is speaking with his voice like a trump. Okay, you can read about that in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. There is no mention of the trump of God, or God speaking with his voice like a trumpet in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, the sound of a trumpet is being made by the angels, not God himself. Okay, that's the first problem. Secondly, Matthew chapter 24 mentions great signs and wonders. We covered that earlier in, uh, in, 20, in Matthew 24, verse 3, and verse 24, and verse 30. You have signs mentioned, okay, happening before the appearing of Jesus Christ. And we covered the scriptures like 1 Corinthians 1, 22, which shows the Jews require a sign. And Exodus chapter 7, verse 3 to 5, and Exodus chapter 4, verse 20 to 30, show the Jewish nature of spiritual signs. There are no signs and wonders mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 54, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. That's another problem you got there too. Uh, next problem, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 and 31, also mentions that, quote, all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when the appearing of Jesus Christ happens. Compare this with Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. They'll look on him whom they have pierced, and they're going to mourn. I believe that when Jesus Christ comes back, they're going to see him and they're going to realize, you know, he, he, was, he was our Savior and Messiah all along. And they're going to mourn for that. Because just think about it, every Jew throughout history that died rejecting Jesus Christ is in hell right now. I mean, it's going to be a very sorrowing thought realizing that if you're a, a Jewish person out there. Uh, which makes clear that the Jews will look on him whom they appear and they will mourn. Paul never mentions anything about tribes mourning in 1 Corinthians 15 or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. So you got another problem there too. Next problem, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, both mention dead saints being resurrected and going up before the living saints. There are no dead saints being resurrected anywhere in Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, or chapter 21. Not one mention. There's no, there's no resurrection of the dead in Matthew 24. But there is in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, particularly in verse 16. Uh, next problem, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 31, says that the angels gather the elect from the four corners of the earth. You read uh, uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, talks about how in the resurrection we are neither married nor given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Okay, paraphrasing, of course. But I believe the angels in, that are gathering the people in Matthew 24 are redeemed saints. So you have the angels gathering the people, uh, but however, there are no angels gathering people in Matthew chapter 20, or sorry, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. Okay, we're called up and we meet the Lord in the air. There's no angels that come and gather us up. We meet God in the air. He, he calls our name, you know, uh, John Craig and come up hither and we meet him in the air. There's no angels gathering us. Uh, Paul simply says that Christians hear the trump of God and meet the Lord in the air. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Next problem, and there's, there's other problems too, but these are just, are just a few of them. The events in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 54, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18, are described as happening, quote, in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. So it's split second it happens. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 52 is when it describes that. The events happen as quickly as the blink of an eye. You blink an eye, it just, it's over, it's that fast. This is not the case in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29 to 31. A process of events takes place that is described. First, the sun and the moon are darkened, then the stars fall from heaven, uh, Matthew 24, verse 29, and Joel 3, 15. And the, then the sign of the Son of Man appears, verse 30 of Matthew 24. Then the angels gather the elect, verse 31 of Matthew 24. The events described in Matthew 24, verse 29 and 31, are not happening in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. They're happening as a process of events. But then Paul says they happen in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, at the rapture. So clearly, it's not referring to the same events. These are just a few of the, of the major inconsistencies you have with the, two, with the two passages. So they're talking about the same event, then you obviously have, then it, basically I'll put it this way. If they're referring to the same event, then the word of God would have errors in it, and it cannot be the word of God if it has errors in it. Got a problem there. So don't, don't believe this lie that, oh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 lines up with Matthew 24. It doesn't. They're, they're talking about two different events. So don't be deceived by this post-trib false doctrine. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.